فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So the second root cause is what? ذهاب العلماء أو اتخاذ رؤساء جهال It is the passing away of the scholars The scholars dying And people then taking ignorant people as their leaders And attributing them as Or ascribing uh, ilm to them Saying that these people are ulama This is another root cause That brings about extremism In other words This is tar'isul jahala Tar'isul jahala Is to make an ignorant Pseudo-scholar And ascribe to him And say that he's an alim A scholar مثلا This brings about extremism Whether that extremism is exaggeration Or it brings extremism in, in negligence Many may ask and say Akhi But that's very subjective Who do we who do, How we say is a scholar And that's very important because This term is a wasf shar'i The word alim is a name that has rulings that come with it rights come with it reward comes with it so it's important that this word is understood and when words are shar'i terms you tend to find people go extreme in it whether it become extreme and exaggerating and giving this word meanings that are not part of its reality or becoming very negligent regarding it and saying that this person is a what? Is this when in reality he is nowhere close to it? Ibn al-Qayyim in his kitab I'lam al the first volume the seventh page he, some, he says something which I was very pleased with and I loved he says the following Now what we, I want you to all understand is that the scholars, when they say alim, they mean, and it's a synonym of mujtahid. A mujtahid and an alim are seen the same. They are looked at what? The same. They are seen the what? The same. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says in his kitab, Ilam al in first volume, page seven, uh, page seven, He says, Fuqaha'u al-Islam. The ulama are what? Fuqaha'u al-Islam. They are the jurists of Islam. وَمَنْ دَارَتِ الْفُتْيَ عَلَىٰ أَقْوَالِهِمْ Fatwa, verdict, revolves around their speech. In other words, when people give fatwa, they bring them and they are in their statements. Fatawa revolves around them. For example, today people will say this issue is like this, and you'll say to them, Who said it? Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said, Sheikh Ibn Baz said, Sheikh Al Albani said, Sheikh Muqbil Ibn Hadi Al Wadi'i said. These are people we consider and we know as Mandarat Alayhim Al Futya. They are people who fatwa revolves around. Good. Bain Al Alami amongst the people. Al Ladina Khusu, pay attention to this, powerful. الذين خصوا and they are specified in what باستنباط الأحكام in extracting rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah that's something that they are unique in not everybody can do that other people what do they do they look at the statements of the scholars that are out there that's where the students student of knowledge comes into place the student of knowledge what he will do is that He will say, what did this scholar say? Okay, what's his argument? And what did this scholar say? What is his argument? He sees that this issue has four views, or three views, or you know, two views. And he looks at each party's views. And then what he does is that, he strengthens between what's amongst their statements. Because he studied usul al-fiqh and qawaid al-fiqhiyya, and he studied mustalah al-hadith, and he knows the Arabic language, and he has good understanding of it. So he strengthens the view of what's already there. Amal ulama, wal mujtahidun, la... They have ahliya, they have the rights to go to the ahkam itself, the kitab and the sunnah, the masadir. And what do they do from it? Istimbatul ahkam. 
they extract rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. And they place it on مسائل, issues which are nawazil, contemporary issues that haven't been seen. And mustajaddat, matters that are newly, uh, newly occurred. For example, somebody would say, Akhi, I lost a family member of mine. And nowadays when a, when a family member dies from you, or you lose a family member, as doctors, what they will sometimes do is that parts of the body of the person who died is taken. A piece of his heart or something, they try sometimes to take it. And then they say to you, take the body now. But then parts of his body is missing. What's the ruling regarding this? Amputating somebody's body parts after he's died and selling them, and etc. These are masail which are nawazil, contemporary issues that are very prominent now. You don't ask that to kullam and habba wadab. You don't ask that to every bakr and amr. This goes back to who? The ulama al rabbaniyun. And the, they are the ones who look at this matter, and when they look at it, they bring out ahkam and rulings for it. He goes on to say, وَعُنُوا بِضَبْطِ قَوَاعِدِ الْحَلَالِ مِنَ الْحَرَامِ وَعُنُوا بِضَبْطِ قَوَاعِدِ الْحَلَالِ مِنَ الْحَرَامِ They are also engaged with specifying, narrowing down the principles of halal from haram. The issue isn't halal or halal. That everything for them is halal and everything is allowed and when I say everything is allowed, I don't mean that, that the things in the religion are halal until proven haram. But I mean they, they say it's halal even after it's proven it's haram. For them, you see lenience on making things halal. For example, we'll say to you the beard, huh? it can be shaved, no problem. They will say, for instance, that riba, uh, it's halal. Mortgages and how, taking on how he's permissible and fatwas like that, like that. That's not the ulama. The ulama have qawaid principles that they're picking up from when they're making something halal from what they're making it haram. I looked at a lot of this entire kalam with the statement of Ibn al Qayyim stops there. I've looked at brothers, I've looked at the uh, statements of the scholars. I looked at the kalam of the Salaf of Hadi Ummah. And a person's knowledge or a person being a scholar is known through one of four ways. One of four ways. The first one is that the scholars praise him. Like Al Imam Malik rahimahullah, said, What? I did not give fatwa. And I did not speak about, I did not take a, a, a seat until what? Until 70 of the prominent scholars of my time gave me permission to do so. They gave no verdict, they gave no fatwa until 70 of the ulama of his time, kibar ulama, he consulted them, he spoke to them, he uh, took their opinion on board. And all 70 of them, they said to him, you have the right to go and give fatwa. Now when we're saying fatwa, what do we mean? Istimbatul ahkam, extracting the rulings from the Qur'an directly. That's what Imam Malik is talking about here. Istimbat meaning him going to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and extract. As for if a student of knowledge is sitting there and telling the people that this is what Alim Fulan said and this is what the Alim Fulan said and this is what so and so said. And this is not what they're this is not what an Imam Malik statement is talking about. Are you with me? We're talking about istimbatul ahkam and mentioning halal and haram min indi nafsik from yourself. This is, the, this is when it becomes who gave you the permission, who gave you the rights to do this. But if somebody sits here and says to the people, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said this, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said this, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said this, Sheikh Ibn Baz said this, Al Imam Ahmad Rahimullah said this, Al Imam Malik said this, Al Imam. And he gives the verdicts of the ulama as a student of knowledge after having looked at who is the strongest according to him then this is not in any way, form or shape that which Imam Malik is talking about. Pay attention here. This slides under many people's 
hands. Ajahilu, are they ignorant of it? Am tajahalu fahlahum amur. Are they ignorant of it or are they deliberately making themselves ignorant of it? They are both bad as each other. The second thing that indicates that this person is a scholar and a person of knowledge, he can be identified that he's a scholar, is durusu, his lessons. The person looks at his lessons and how he teaches. And when his lessons are seen, it's realized that he's a man of a ilm. The things that he brings out, the ahkam that he extracts from the verses, the durus that he teaches are books which are reliable and praiseworthy. Admired and loved. That's another sign. But if a person is not known to teach anything and is considered as a scholar, what's your, what do you teach? And what are your uh, lessons that you go through? Because we know that the job of the Prophet is what? لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ that the Prophet's job was what? To purify the people and to give them tazkiyah to nafs. And it is also to what? To educate them. And the scholar's job is to inherit, or the, the scholar is one who inherits from who? He inherits from the Prophet as we said, as we, the Prophet said, Hadith Imam Muhammad in his Musnad, in Hadith Abi Darda. العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا درهما ولا دينارا وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحد وافر that the ulama are ones who have inherited from who? the prophets so what is it that they inherited from them? they inherited the knowledge from them they also inherited from educating the people and teaching the people so if you're a scholar he will see from you that you're educating the people like the Prophet was alayhi salatu Are you with me? But only you're seen in demonstrations and protests and rallies. You're an activist. You're a politician. Then you are being a scholar. فَتَنَبَّى Ponder on this point and realize the reality of it. The next one is فَتَاوِي the, the scholar's verdicts and his fatwas are looked at. And we realize that his fatawas are in accordance to the qawaid al-shari'ah. He doesn't go out of maqasid al-shari'ah that we mentioned before, remember. And his verdicts are in line of the verdicts of the previous scholars. Are you there? He's not coming out with something strange, something gharib, that's never been heard of before. Pay attention. We well, look at his verdicts. Fatawat. If this person is only taking ruchas, is taking the ease. As the scholars they say, man tatabba'a ruchas al ulama. Anyone who goes and copy pastes and all he does is that he takes the verdicts that are easy from the scholars. What did they say? Ijtama'a alayhi sharru kullu. All of evil will be gathered in you. Some of the scholars they say, tazandaqa, you become heretic. Heresy. The scholar's fatwa is not, you know. And in reality, sometimes you can, the scholar can be known, pay attention, this is very strong. That if a scholar, if a person is a scholar, his verdict can be uh, tell, told from his verdicts that he's a scholar. How do you know? He's got no idrab, no contradictions. No contradictions in what? In the verdicts that he puts forward. Because he's picking up from the same principles that he was picking up from the get-go. And we always give examples for this. The qadiyah to nikah, is this, what's to you nikah? Is nikah, when you identify, fuqaha differ on what's nikah, what's meant by nikah? Because the Arabic language takes many meanings. So if a person says that nikah is, for instance, al-aqdu, the contract is nikah, then his verdict heads towards a direction. Every fatwa he gives has to be in line of this belief of his, which is that, that the nikah is contract. It's the contract alone. Are you with me? Another one believes that nikah is not the contract, but it is what? The intimacy and the sexual relationship that takes, between, that takes place between the wife and the, the, wife and the 
husband. Okay? He believes this is a nikah. Then his fatwas is going to head to another direction. So whatever he gives a fatwa is going to be in another direction. It is, it's a sign that this person doesn't really have knowledge and it is not an alim. When you find him giving sometimes fatwa in line of his belief that it's a contract and then sometimes he's turning towards the belief that it's what? That it's intimacy. Lack of consistency. This shows that your fatwa, it shows that you don't have solid grounds. The fourth, the fourth thing that shows that this person is a scholar is his mu'allafat, his works. Are you with me, brothers? His mu'allafat. Mu'allafat meaning your, your authorship and the books that you have produced. The scholars will look at your works and say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The way that you go into the evidences and you extract rulings from it and how you are consistent on your arguments and how you are powerful in the knowledge that you possess. Are you with me, brothers? Today, Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Bani, rahimahullah, his mu'allafat, where, does it, where has it reached? Mashariq al-Ardi wa Magharibiha. You go anywhere, you, f- you will find a mu'allaf, ta'lif, ta- from uh, Sheikh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani. If somebody comes out and says, Sheikh Nasr, who is he, what was his knowledge like? We will say, Uskut. Let his books talk for him. Let his works talk for him. His authorship and the books that he has produced is enough to show you that he is an alim haqqan. That he's a true scholar. Alayhi rahmatullahi, may Allah bestow his never-ending mercy onto him. But the jahil, the ghabi, the dim-witted one who's ignorant, hasn't read Albani's works. Now, Sifa Salat al-Nabi, he's not read, and he's not read one of the smallest books that Sheikh Nasir has written. Of course, he's going to come out and scream that Sheikh Nasir doesn't know hadith, he's mutasahil. If you give him a pen and paper and you say, write mutasahil, he may not even be able to write it properly. Are you with me, brothers? Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah ta'ala his works are enough to show it's like trying to place your hand on the sun and say there's no it's, it's night time it's dark and try to dismiss that the fact that it's day and say look it's dark it's dark that's the reality of those who try to dismiss Sheikh Nasir's works wallahi that's the reality he's an individual who f- if all the other conditions are missed and they're not even looked at his mu'allafat are enough. ولذلك, Al-Imam Abu Tahir al-Silafi. Abu Tahir al-Silafi. Not Salafi, Silafi. Silafi was said because of his bottom lip. It was ripped. He had a little slice in his bottom lip. That's why it's called Silafi. Abu Tahir al-Silafi, rahimahullah, he praised Al-Imam Abu Sulaiman al-Khattabi, rahimahullah. And he only praised him for what? His works. His sharah was to Abu Dawood. Abu Sulaiman al-Khattabi has a sharah on what? Sulaiman Bidad, who's the author of the Ali Sulan. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, that is what a scholar is. That is an alim. We now have people who they don't have lessons at all. Or even if they do, that which is little. When it's meant to be the job of an alim, a scholar. Well, like today, look at, for example, with example, things become clear. Let's take Sheikh Sa'ad ibn Nasir al-Shithri, rahimahullah, and hafidhahullah, he's still alive. He's fi qayd al-hayat, ma zala hayy nurzak. Sheikh Sa'ad Nasir al-Shithri, rahimahullah, hafidhahullah, of course he needs Allah's rahmah as well, so we say rahimahullah as well, is one person, we can take it for an example, look what he does. Sheikh Sa'ad is a uddu hayyit kibar al-ulama. He's a member of the Islamic Committee. The, the, uh, the great scholars, the senior scholars, he's a Udu of that committee. He's also a teacher in Jamaat al Imam and Jamaat Malik Saud, both the universities. He's also, pay attention, three things I mentioned. Four, he's also Istishar al Maliki. He's a consultant that the king consults. 
He's also a mudir, I think. Yes, mudir of KIU University. He's also a mudarris in Haram al Makki. He teaches. He's also an imam of his, lo lo his own local masjid. He's also a husband of two wives and a father of kids. He's also an author who authors many works. He has a takhrij and a tahqiq on the kitab Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, which is 20 I think something odd volumes. He has sharah on Bulugh al-Maram, he has a sharah on Umdatul Hakam, he has a sharah on Risalatul Usul al-Fiqh, Akbar al-Akbari rahimahullah, he has a sharah on Risalatul Latifa, he has a sharah on Qawaid al-Fiqhiyya, he has a sharah on Takhrij al-Furu'i ala al-Usul by Zidjani, he has sharah on Al-Faqih wa Al-Mutafaqih li Imam al-Khatib al-Baghdadiyu, Hadith wa la Haraj. All of that, and he's still a teacher. And he still educates the people. And he still aim, takes on the responsibility that is upon a scholar, which is what? Educate the people. Teach the people. We find people who don't have lessons one or two. Are you with me, brothers? They ha their fatawat when we listen to shad, gharib. Where did you get this from? No mu'allafat to be touched. No authorship that we can say, MashaAllah, he authored this book. Look at Fathul Bari today. Anyone who wants to read Sahih al-Bukhari, can he read Sahih al-Bukhari and understand it properly if he turns a blind eye towards Fathul Bari? La wallahi, he can't. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, when he was told that there were a group of people who, youngsters who were mutahamisin, that were trying to say that we don't want to study Ibn Hajar's works and who is he, he fell into Ash'ariya and whatnot and, and Nawawi and the likes of them. Ibn Uthaymin said, really? Ibn Hajar's work, Fathul Bari? ولذلك ودر هي سير رحمه الله تعالى ابن خلدون صحيح البخاري دين على هذه الأمة صحيح البخاري was a debt on this أمة أن السقاوي كيم شمس الدين السقاوي and he said لو رأى ابن خلدون if ابن خلدون was to see what ابن حجر did in authoring فتح الباري لرأى أن الدين توفي حق الوفاء he would have realized and come to the conclusion that the debt has been paid off for us based uh, by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, by explaining Sahih al-Bukhari in the way it deserves. He wrote the kitab Hadhi sari which is also read as Huda sari which is the Muqaddima, two-volume book. It's the Muqaddima that he has placed for his kitab Fathul al-Bari. Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, wrote this for 16 years. Today, you want to study Sahih al-Bukhari. You will not be able to understand it in depth, in details, and truly come to con conclusion in this, this book Without what? Without this book, Fathul Bari. Also, I'lam al muqqi'in written by Ibn al Qayyim, Ibn Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz, what did he say? This is Kitab al Dunya, this is the book of this world. Yani, uh, of course, after the book of Allah and the Sunnah. But this book is a book, la yastagni minhu talib, wala al alim, wala al muntahi, wala al mubtid. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a scholar, scholastic scholar, profound, prominent imam. It doesn't matter. And you're a beginner. This book, I'lam al is a book everyone needs. So these are the people who are ulama. Because of their authorship, you can't, you can't turn away from it. You can't. Their verdicts and their fatawat are needed because of the nawazil. They are able to come out with the ruling intact according to what the Kitab and the Sunnah is saying. Or as close as possible as there is. Those are ulama. Not a person who only is seen in demonstrations and protests and rallies and randomly pops into the masjid and there's one dars or dars here. Has no authorship. Has no, what do you call it, mu'allafat to be touched on. Fatawat, when you listen to it, it's gharib and shad and it's like, where did you get this from? Are you with me, brothers? And this is what brings about extremism. It breeds extremism. Extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence. And we know the famous hadith in Sahihayn, in hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, that the Prophet said, Inna Allah la yaqbidu al-ilma intiza'an yantazi'uhu min sudur al-rijal. Allah does not take knowledge, take it away and lift it from the slaves. Walakin yaqbidu al-ilma biqabdu al-ulama. But Allah takes knowledge by taking the scholars. Hatta ida lam yubqi aliman, until there is no alim left. What happens? It takhada al-nasu ru'usan juhala. 
the people start to take ignorant ones as their leaders. And they start pushing them forward and say, oh, this is an alim, oh, this is an alim, this is a scholar. Pushing somebody who's ignorant forward and to make them, the mass assume that this person is an alim. So what does he do? Fa'afto, this one comes on, on a channel or a, a video. And what does he do? Fa'afto, he gives fatwa. Bighayri ilmin with no knowledge. Fadallu, he misguides wa adallu and he misguides others. Again, what I say, the fatawa is what? The fatawa is what? The fatwa here is doing is istimbatul ahkam. He's extracting rulings from the Quran directly himself. He's placing qawaid for halal and haram. Are you with me, brothers? He's doing that and with no knowledge. He misguides himself and he misguides the mass. The mass don't know. They say, إِذَا لَبِسَ الْحِمَارُ خَزِّنْ If a donkey goes and wears a, 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 you know, a, a, the, the clothing of a scholar, the people will look at it and they will say, فَيَا لَكَ مِنْ حِمَارِ حِمَارِ Shaykh, Allah, that's the people. The عَامَةُ nas. For them, you say, يَعْنِي three times, you're a talib ilm. Haqqan, that's the reality that they, they are. It's your job to tell the people, يَا إِخْوَى يَا إِخْوَى لَا 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 This is a term. This is a shara'i term. Ilm and ulama is, is a shara'i term. And it is only for who? It's for the ulama al rasikhun The grounded scholars. Give it to them. We now find people who are pushing in the West, in the West, that they are the ulama and that they should be the marj, the mazdar, that the people need to come back to them. Cutting the people from what? The ulama. This is what brings about extremism. Because who are the ones who are able to deal with extremism? The ulama al-rasikhun, the scholars. They're the ones who are able to deal with it. The Prophet clearly is telling us, this is one of them. This is, this is what's going to happen. Inna Allah la yaqbil irhamuka Allah. إن الله لا يقبض العلم انتزاعا ينتزعه من العباد ولكن يقبض العلم بقبض العلماء حتى إذا لم يبقى عالما اتخذ الناس the people will take أما اتخذ الناس sorry رؤوس الجهالة the people will take ignorant ones as leaders فسؤلوا أن when they take him as an ignorant leader they start asking him questions فأفتوا بغير علم this one gives verdicts because he feels like oh I've been placed as a scholar الله أكبر and he goes forward and he gives verdicts with no knowledge he misguides himself firstly and he misguides those who are around him. This is, as I said, is Tar'isul Jahla, when the ignorant ones are made leaders. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, in the yaday sa'ah, just before the hour strikes. This is another hadith that the Prophet is clearly saying, pay attention. And I said, these are what bring about, and these are the root causes for what? Extremism. You, people think that extremism, you're looking at it at other directions. We are the ones that will give birth to extremism. If we don't, what? If we don't observe these points. If we don't observe these points, then we're the ones who are pushing extremism and we're bringing up extremism. In the bayna yaday sa'a, just before the hour, there are salawatun khadda'at, there are years of deception. What's happening in this year, this time? So before the hour comes, there is there's there's a time, a period of time, salawatul khadda'at, years of deception. What's gonna happen? Yusaddaqu fiha al kadib. The liar is trusted. fiha sadiq. The truthful one is considered as a liar. The liar is trusted, and the truthful one is labeled as a liar. fiha al khain. The deceptive and the crooked one is what? Trusted. Is entrusted. fiha al Al Amin, the trustworthy one, is labeled as deception, deceptive. وَيَتَكَلَّمُ فِيهِ الرَّوَيْبِضَةِ The Rawaybida come out and they start to speak. The Sahaba, they said, قِيلَ وَمَا الرَّوَيْبِضَةِ Who are the Rawaybida, Messenger of Allah? The Messenger said, الرَّجُلُ التَّافِ The low, little, pathetic individual يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي أَمْرِ الْعَمَّةِ He talks about matters related to the safety and the honor of the Muslims. He talks about matters that are general. He goes and starts bringing ahkam and istibatat from himself 
placing it on matters that encompass everybody. Meaning he speaks about Nawazir and Mustajadat. And if you do look at it today, we have many what? At-Tafi, Amr Rawaybidah. That are speaking about what? Yatakallabu fi amri al-Amma. That talk about matters that they have no knowledge of. Again, as I said before, if the person is giving a verdict in a matter based on what the ulama said, فلا يلام. The person is not criticized. He is not criticized. But when the person is doing istimbatat al-ahkam, and really he is what? الرجل التافي. يتكلموا في أمر العامة. Who are you to speak about these issues من قبل نفسك from your own self and to propagate it to the mass when in reality you are nothing but a tafi, a pathetic individual. As Zubair ibn Adi, he said, أتينا, we came to Anas ibn Malik. فشكونا, we complained to him about what? That which we endure from and that which we go through from Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi. Hajjaj was a tyrant leader. So we went to Anas ibn Malikin and we complained to him and we told him, Are you with me, brothers? We told him that which we go through, the hardship that we are enduring. So he said to them, when they said this to him, that Hajjaj is. And he was a tyrant leader. He was massacring, massacring and killing and destroying his own people. He said to them, Ismiru, be patient. He didn't say, do Arab Spring. Go against your leader, spill blood. He didn't say, he said, Ismiru, be patient. He didn't, even, he didn't entertain the idea of speaking about Hajjaj. And say, oh yeah, he's a fasiq mujrim. He didn't speak about him. Like our, many of our youngsters, who are based, who are fully emotional, فقط, فقط. The textual evidence is not what governs them. Their emotions is what governs them. There's nothing you can do for that person. There's nothing you can do for a person who's emotional until he starts to use his what? Some of the ulama used to say that Allah placed your head higher than your heart. So you think, use your brain. Stop being emotional. You have textual evidence in front of you. So if a person is not thinking straight and he's too emotional, the scholars, they mention that if that person is not allowed to, he's not allowed to govern between two people. So how can we listen to your verdict and your opinions if you're fully, you're just emotional? Come to your senses and then inshallah ta'ala we may have a, a fruitful discussion. So he said to him, Ismiru, be patient. Be patient. He was a scholar for Dalla. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said be patient because he's telling them al-masalih al and he knows the mafasid that will come from it if they go against Hajjaj he said the spirit will be patient for you know la yati alaykum zamanun a time will not come a time will come a time will come unto you illa alladhi ba'dahu sharru minhu there will come unto you a time that which comes after it is worse than that was which was before. Hatta talaqaw rabbakum until you meet your Lord. Anas wanted to emphasize and draw this point home, and he said to them, Sami'tuhu, I heard this, min nabiyyikum, your prophet. I did, I heard the prophet say this. He advised them to be patient. And he also advised them, Ali uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he said to them, فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ زَمَانٌ A time will not come unto you. Except that you would see that the time before it was better than that which is to come. Meaning every time it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Ask those who were, were championing and arguing and uh, screaming on the top of their lungs for the Arab Spring. What did they give birth to? What, what came out of it? هَلَكَ <laughs> The peoples are suffering. People are suffering. He said, that's what's going to happen. Until you meet, until you meet your Lord, it's going to get worse. It's going to get what? Worse. I heard this from your Prophet. 